Hello guys, welcome to a brand new video from me, Pickles Parker Reviews. Today I'm going to be starting a brand new series called Unpopular Opinions. A series where I basically just explain an opinion that I personally have that is generally unpopular. Quite self-explanatory really. Yes, today I'm starting off this series with an unpopular opinion that if you know me in real life, you most likely know that I have. And that is that I like Justice League. Obviously, if you remember, it was quite a while back when Justice League initially came out, I did a movie reaction for it. The second movie reaction I ever did, actually. I praised it. And that was before everyone started hating on Justice League, because I'm pretty sure it got initially good reviews. I'm not really sure. I'm trying to remember now. Then it just got a ton of hate and backlash from critics and fans alike. Mainly, it got heavily panned by the fans. And I just never understood it then. And I really can't understand it now with some of the things that have been said about it. Seriously. Worse than Batman v Superman. The worst superhero ever film ever made like really justice league one has their own opinions and i have my own opinion as well which is why i'm making this video well, to be fair when looking at the dceu i do actually quite like the dceu because when thinking about it there's only one one out bad movie that i really dislike which is batman v superman man of steel i do quite enjoy although i think it's slightly not as good just because it feels uh, slightly like a film like we've seen before, mainly due to, you know, the origin of Superman is one we know. It's very similar to um, The Amazing Spider-Man in that respect. Like, I think it's a good movie, but it's not quite as good as it could have been if we hadn't had movies before that telling a very similar story. And the Superman, I've said, I really don't like that film. There are some elements that I do quite like on retrospect. Ben Affleck is decent in the film. I do think I like a lot of the stuff with Batman and the design in that film. But generally, I was so hyped for it, and it was just so bad. Suicide Squad, I loved initially. Like, I really loved Suicide Squad initially. And then the more and more I've subsequently watched it and thought about it, it is just gone really downhill in my judgment i think it's mainly down to all the stuff with the joker i really hated over time what they did with the joker enchantress is not a good villain oh. <laughs> enchantress is not a good villain and i think that ultimately the suicide squad doesn't quite feel like a ragtag team quite like they were like thought it was going to it's not quite as you know tighten it as the guardians wonder woman i loved i thought that was a great story there and gal gadot was great as wonder woman obviously we've got justice league here um which i really enjoyed as well the aquaman i said um that i really like that in another video as well but yes justice league i really don't get a lot of the criticisms of justice league i mean i think it's a fair criticism to say yes it possibly came too early. The Flash, Cyborg and Aquaman should have been introduced in their own films. And I can see that because they do feel incredibly paper thin and underdeveloped in this film. Yet I don't really see that as a problem. But I've preferred them to do what the MCU did and have them in their own movies before this. Yes, of course I would have. It would have felt much more better if they were more fleshed out and developed prior to the release of this film. I think for what Justice League does, really, I think the characters are serviceable and actually get a decent introduction for this film. I think if you look at a character like Aquaman, seeing what they have done building upon his character will ultimately make it feel a lot better with his slightly paper thin character in Justice League with the what they did to build on that character. Ultimately, I feel like if we'd had a Flash movie like straight after Justice League, like last year, early last year, when I think it was scheduled to release. In a cyborg movie, I think people would feel a lot more better about their introductions in Justice League. I don't mind the fact that they're kind of 
a caricature of what their fleshed out version is because if obviously if you look at Aquaman the Justice League version is very much a caricature of the fleshed out version of his character in that we get in Aquaman you see the Flash he's very kind of just comic relief there Cyborg is very kind of one note and serious and I think uh, you know a lot of people take issue with that but I don't mind that because as I said the intention was to flesh them out in you know other movies I think every character in this film kind of feels a very specific role so Wonder Woman's kind of the heart of the team Batman's the kind of the leader but leader who kind of is kind of down on his luck he's not quite confident um yet he's kind of slightly got a bit of inspiration within him he's kind of all for the team and then also kind of not for the team at the same time. Flash is very much the inexperienced superhero used for comic relief. Poor man's kind of the hero that is incredibly reluctant to join um, and is kind of bitter but ultimately does join and has a load of fun with it. Cyborg's the kind of very conflicted hero who is kind of you know starred by his origins but ultimately this team is ultimately what makes him better as a character. And Superman's kind of the main force of bringing the team together and ultimately is what gives them hope and is ultimately, you know, what brings the whole team together in the final fight. You see, all the team members of the Justice League fill a very specific role. It always reminds me of uh, Doctor Who. In the day of the Doctor, you know, David Tennant, the Tenth Doctor, isn't is more of a caricature of what he was in the series, but him and John Hurt and the 11th Doctor, they all fill very specific roles in that special. Same in Justice League, all of the members of the Justice League kind of fill very specific roles in the film. But I feel this criticism is very unfair. Yes, in the Avengers, you know, these characters were built up over years. But if you look more recently in films like Civil War, which uh, may be appearing in another one of these Unpopular Opinions videos, it might. It might not. It is. As you look at Civil War and you've got Spider-Man and Black Panther. Great in that film, but no one actually criticises the fact that these characters are introduced with very little backstory and very little character and ultimately feel like caricatures of what they would go on to be. Look at Spider-Man in Civil War. Honestly, he's such a one-note character. He's very much the comic relief, just like the Flash is in Justice League. He's very much the inexperienced hero, but there's not really much, you know, to his character and they don't really explain his origin story because they presume you know it because of the previous Spider-Man films just like in The Flash they presume you know his origin story because of The Flash TV show. Yet people moan about the introduction of The Flash, Cyborg and Aquaman in Justice League yet I never hear anyone moaning about Spider-Man and Black Panther's introduction in Civil War at all and I think it's literally the same principle. Why moan about Justice League and the introduction of those characters and not moan about Black Panther and Spider-Man's introduction in Civil War because it's literally the same thing. Yes, moving on from that, I'd kind of like to talk about Batman because I think that uh, he is a character that very much gets scrutinised in this movie which, um, you know, I think is kind of unjustified. Yes, Ben Affleck is slightly better in Batman v Superman, but I think he plays a great ba dark Batman in that film, but I also think he plays a great lighter Batman in this film. I don't think it's impossible for that character to have a couple of jokes. Is there a quite too many? Yes, there probably is. He is borderline jovial in this film. I think ultimately, with, you know, the kind of hope that Superman has brought in, he's kind of very much inspired to bring this team together. There's a sense of optimism in Batman that we don't usually see. In Batman v Superman, he's down on his luck. You know, he's very much, you know, in a very bad place, you know, killing criminals, branding them in prison. You know, whereas with Superman dying, he's seen the hope in the world, and he's very much, you know, he has a slight hint of optimism which is something we didn't see from him before. Therefore, I think it's naturally logical for him to slightly be a bit more happy-go-lucky and making jokes in this film. Are there too many jokes? Yes. Ultimately, I don't think Dark Batman, Light Batman, it's not impossible to get there, and I think ultimately it's actually quite clever what they did with Batman in this film. 
Ben Affleck work better in Batman v Superman? Yes, but that still doesn't mean that Ben Affleck doesn't work in this movie because he 100% does. Watching this the other day with the context of Ben Affleck obviously, you know, having left and this being his final role, I am quite upset because I like his dynamic with the Justice League and I think that Ben Affleck actually gave a pretty good performance in this film, contrary to what many people say when they say he just he's just phoning in. I don't see that. To me, he seems 100% on board and I do think it's a great performance. Al Gadot as Wonder Woman is brilliant. She's brilliant in Wonder Woman, brilliant for the couple of scenes she has on Batman v Superman. And I think she really brings a nice sense of just hope and just, you know, optimism. I said Batman was optimistic before, but Wonder Woman is ultimately the symbol of hope and light and warmth that we get in this team. You know, she's kind of like the kind of, you know, uh, welcoming figure in this Justice League. And I think her dynamic with Batman is just really great to see. They're kind of two sides of the same coin in a way. And I just think they work really well as well as the senior members of the Justice League. As I said, I think the team ultimately, you know, fulfill certain roles, and I think ultimately, I think it's actually a really well selected, you know, version of the Justice League. All the members fit in really well, and ultimately, I think it was the, a great lineup for the first film. Would I have I liked to have seen Superman in it more? Yes, but I'll get onto that later. Would I have I liked to have seen Green Lantern? Hell yeah! They said they'd unite the seven, there's only six. So, Green Lantern, I'm actually going to make a video on this, uh, why I'd love to see Green Lantern in this DCEU. Maybe it wouldn't have, you know, worked with the story, although we do see Green Lanterns in that flashback. And I think, ultimately, I think he should have been in there, but perhaps he may have been the hero that you may have had to have introduced in another film, um, because, obviously, there's a lot of baggage and there's a lot of, you know, the lore around Green Lantern that perhaps you couldn't have shoehorned into this film. And then speaking of that, you know, there's a lot of that with Aquaman and he still works in this film and then you explore that in Aquaman, so maybe that could have worked. I am going to do a video on this, but I really want Green Lantern to appear in the DCEU in the future. So let's talk about another criticism. Steppenwolf. People have lambasted Steppenwolf, the villain in this film, and I really have no problem with him. Is he a weak villain? Yes, he is a weak villain. But to be honest, is he much weaker than Malekith? Ronan the Accuser? Villains like that? No, he is not. The Ronan the Accuser, I see no, you know, criticism of that villain. And while I don't hate Ronan the Accuser, I quite enjoy him, I enjoy Steppenwolf as well. And I don't really see, you know, why Steppenwolf is lambasted with criticism and Ronan, and to be fair, there is a fair lot of criticism at Malekith, but Ronan, no criticism at all. I don't see it. You know, people say, oh, Darkseid should have been in this film. How was Darkseid going to feature in this film? Because if you look, this film is very much focused on the Justice League and the team. It's not very focused on Steppenwolf, is why, which is why he comes off as slightly poor. I think that was ultimately should have been the focus. You don't want to focus on the villain and then the team be really underdeveloped. It's like putting Thanos in... The first Avengers movie, it just doesn't work. Thanos were felt really underdeveloped. It's the same with putting Darkseid in Justice League. It just wouldn't have worked. The reason why Loki in the Avengers, you know, doesn't come off as a weak villain is because we'd already had him introduced. Therefore, we didn't need the time to introduce him. Whereas in Justice League, we haven't had Steppenwolf introduced. Therefore, we had to kind of set him up. And that took a little bit of time. Therefore, he was always going to feel slightly weak. I think what people don't understand is that Steppenwolf was never going to be, you know, the main focus of this film. And I think ultimately he was serviceable for what this film was going to be. Building up to Darkseid slowly, but Darkseid could have never properly been in this film to great effect. So I think it would have been a worse sin if Darkseid would have been in this movie and would have been absolutely wasted. You know, people say all DC rushed into Batman v Superman, you know, with Doomsday and the Death of Superman storyline. And while I certainly think that, you know, why do the same people who say they rushed into that say that Darkseid should have been in this movie? They rushed that, so it was good that they didn't rush Darkseid. I kind of like to talk about the final controversial thing 
that I think there is about this movie, and that's Superman. Now, the main criticism I do see about this movie is the whole resurrection of Superman. With me, I don't have a problem with it. Yes, Superman should have been alive for this movie, but ultimately, they did that in Batman v Superman, and I imagine that they probably wish they hadn't done it, but ultimately they did do it, so some way you were going to have to resurrect Superman. The way they do it, I don't mind. The mother box is alien technology. We don't really know it's capable of what it's capable of. You know, it says when combined it will destroy the universe. So ultimately, you know, it's real, probably quite possible this alien technology to revive Superman. Especially as, you know, it kind of saves Cyborg's life. Why couldn't it resurrect Superman? You know, we don't know its capabilities and the mother boxes, I think, were a good way to try and resurrect Superman. Just on a side note, I really like the mother boxes as a concept. Back to Superman, you know, I think that was a logical way to do it. I'd much rather, you know, have Superman in the Justice League and have them resurrect him than not have him in it at all. Superman is a core member of the Justice League. You couldn't have the first ever live action Justice League movie and not have Superman in it. I'm much happier with Superman here than I am if he wasn't here. I do get that scene where Superman's slightly evil and I get like the Justice League's met asses handed to them. I think there's some nice scenes as well. I think it's really cool when, you know, the Flash is running and then he just, you know, Superman just, he realises Superman can see him. That's a real funny moment. While you could say that possibly, you know, there is a slight, you know, retcon of Batman v Superman when Superman is just, you know, beating Batman up, you know, I do think it's a fun scene. Ultimately, I think the resolution of that is, yes, Superman's slightly overpowered, but it's just great to see him in this movie. Ultimately, I think Henry Cavill plays a really good classic Superman. I like him in Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, but ultimately, it's just really great to see him in this kind of classic Superman role, which I think he plays really well and has got me really excited to see him in future DCEU movies. Let's address the CGI moustache in the room. Yes, it's slightly noticeable that Henry Cavill's moustache he had for Mission Impossible Fallout has been CGI'd off, but I don't think it's a bad job, and it's not, you, it's not that noticeable. It just looks like he's just had a shave, that's all. I don't think it looks terrible at all, and it's not distracting for me. Address the tone in this movie. The tone in this movie has had a lot of criticism. People saying it looks like it's been directed by two different directors, which is worse. Zack Snyder, you know, had to drop off the project. Joss Whedon came in to finish it. And you can certainly, you know, see Joss Whedon's impact on this film. Ultimately, I do really like it. I'm much more of a fan of the tone in the MCU than I am in things like Batman v Superman and Man of Steel. So ultimately, I am glad they're kind of taking this tonal shift because I do think that works for DC. DC doesn't have to be dark and gritty all the time. And I think you can still make some slightly darker movies, but you can also make some slightly lighter movies. You look at the MCU, it's not all one tone. Therefore, I don't know why they had... You, I don't know why they had to stick to one tone with you know, the DCEU, mix it up a bit. But I am much happier with this slightly lighter tone for Justice League movies that we get in this film. I think it works really well. I don't get Tony Whiplash from it. And yes, you could say it is kind of a course correction from Batman v Superman, but I think ultimately with the amount of people that didn't like Batman v Superman, there's always going to be a slight case of that. Yes, you could say that it's doing something that I'm slightly worried that, that, that episode 9 of Star Wars will do, which is that it's trying to make you forget about Batman v Superman, whilst also relying heavily on Batman v Superman for you to get the plot, and I'm worried that episode 9 will kind of do that with The Last Jedi. Not ideal, but ultimately I still think it kind of works. If I was to have a main criticism with this film, that would probably be it. It does try and make, try and, you know, make you forget Batman v Superman was also relying on it. That's kind of messy. Ultimately, I think this makes up for Batman v Superman entirely. And in, at the end of the film, where you see all these characters, you know, going off, it really makes me excited for what movies we were going to get and ultimately probably should have had by now from the DCEU. I think this film is great. People could say, yes, it's slightly dull and slightly forgettable. And I could see that argument. For a Justice League movie, you may have wanted it to be 
you know, better than just good. Ultimately, I think that, you know, the Avengers came and it was such, you know, a marvel, uh, sorry for the pun there, and, you know, it had never been done, something like that had never been done before. But ultimately, I don't think Justice League was ever going to feel original because you've got the Avengers and things there. And I think if Justice League was in place of the Avengers, it would be just as loved. I don't quite understand why people hate this movie. I can see why some people were slightly disappointed, but, but I can't see why people just flat out hate this movie. For me, there are some scenes that are generally some of my favourite comic book scenes. The scene underneath Gotham Harbour, where the Flash is saying he hasn't done battle, he's just pushed people, and Batman's just like, just save one person, and the Flash is like, and then what happens? And then Batman's just like, you'll see. Flash, you know, feels the urge to, you know, save more people. I genuinely think is a gr one of my favourite comic book moments of all time. I think it's, you know, a great scene for the Flash, for Batman as well. It's a great scene for his character and also the tone that this Justice League is setting. Ultimately, I do feel that, you know, uh, this film, you know, is paving the way for better films in the DCEU to come. Many people will say that the real game changer was Wonder Woman, and more that says that's the first great film in this DCEU. I think Justice League for, like, the main, you know, team-up and main movies, rather than just, like, the standalone adventures, was, like, such a great turning point in terms of tone. And I think you'd really feel, I don't think you'd get films like Aquaman and Shazam, you know, if the lighter tone wasn't more explored in this film. Ultimately, I just really like Justice League. I feel that, yes, it's not the best movie, but ultimately I think with the restraints that they had, mainly put on by them, by themselves, that I think it was ultimately a great movie and I was very happy with it. just really don't get the hate from this for this film, to be honest. I can understand if people were disappointed, but ultimately I do feel that most of the hate for this movie just is because it's a DC movie and I imagine if this was a Marvel film people would actually quite like it but because it's a DC film people just don't like it. I think I'm such a big fan of the source material and I just think I love these group of characters and I just love this movie. It's probably my favourite DCU movie to be honest. Yeah I really enjoy it regardless of people, what people say. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this episode of Unpopular Opinions, then please leave a like and drop a sub and hit that notification bell to say no stay notified for all my latest videos. What do you think of this idea of unpopular opinions? Because I do have a lot of opinions that many people just generally don't agree with. So what do you think of that? And also what do you think of Justice League? Do you love it? Do you hate it? You know, do you agree with me or do you agree with the mass? What are your thoughts for loving it and hating it? You know, leave your thoughts in the comment section below because regardless of whether your opinion aligns with mine or you dislike Justice League, I'd be very interested to hear your reasoning for, for both sides. Yes, thank you guys for watching and of course, a good bye.